Hi there. Hi, it's me. It's Mike. I got the HasLab His Tank today. After opening it and playing with it, I had to make a video on it because I just have to talk to someone about it. And my wife does not care. Actually, she might. She might pretend that she does because she loves me. I filmed the whole unboxing process of when I was opening it. I might be putting some scenes from that on the screen right now, but I don't want to bore you with packaging. I probably am not going to throw this away. It's big, but it's really, really nice. And I usually throw my GI Joe boxes away. Those go right in the trash. Doesn't matter. Serpentor, Dr. Mindbender, all of it right in the garbage. I do not care. I don't collect boxes, but this this is nice. It's a big box. It's a big boy. Let's take a look at it. This is exactly what it looks like coming out of the box here. So this was a HasLab, it was a crowdfunded project. It was one of the most successful HasLabs that Hasbro has done. And you know what? Congratulations to them. I was one of the people, I was I backed it on day one. And I even remember texting some of my friends and be like, I'm not interested because it kind of leaked like the day before. I'm not in the market for, you know, a big tank. I'm not going to take my GI Joe collecting that far. But this is one of those things that like when, when you see it, you gotta have it. We have all of like the seats in the cockpit and things like that. There's a joystick right here, moves around. It's on a little ball joint. Uh, and then there is a little throttle control and that also moves as well as seat belts, nice little control panel. Obviously we have some working treads, which is neat. It also does have a little ladder that pops down. There's one on each side. This one doesn't want to go. I don't want to break it. There it goes. All right. And then this pops off and you can see some like engine detail in there. It's, I mean, it's, it's something that you don't need. This is not necessary to, uh, for me anyway, to enjoy the, the his tank but it is neat. So let's talk about some of the things that uh, you can get. Uh, as it came with, of course you have a canopy because it would be weird if there wasn't one. Uh, this is clear plastic, so be very careful. Since it is a gullwing canopy, the sides can open, which is really neat. I really like that. I'm probably never gonna do that to put my figure in it. Cause like it's already hard enough and we'll get into that, but like why make it harder? But I mean, it looks so good. And I, I like the, the extra paint work on it. Just gives it a little bit more detail. I think that looks cool. It also came with these little side panels and they just clip right on here. These are like guards for the treads. They just push right on. Uh, and then of course there's another one for the other side. You don't have to put the guards on. Uh, and then of course you can't have a hiss without a, a gun turret to go on the, on the top. It's a tank and, and that's kind of what makes it a tank. There's a cool little kind of piloting joystick that goes back and forth. I like that this moves, but I'm going to be honest. The fact that it moves makes it really hard to put in a figure's hand. And that's kind of annoying. These go up and down like so. I do also wish that there was some kind of detailing here or like a sticker on the front. We have a nice little Cobra logo. This goes right on the back like so. So it just kind of swings around, you know, it can go all the way around. And the final part of the original offering was the Hiss driver. This is the original pack in with the original Hiss tank. And now we have it also with the HasLab Hiss tank. As far as I know, this is exclusive to the set. There's no plan to offer it outside of that. We have some great artwork here on the front. It's number 99 on the side. And we have some cool His Tank branding on the side of the box. Also, it's not sealed at all. But that's enough about the box. Let's talk about the actual figure. That's what we care about. And oh, that's what some people care about more than the actual His Tank, it seems. Yes, moving from head to toe, we have the Cobra His Driver. He looks Great. He sure does look like the Hiss driver. He's got a lot of great molded details and some great paint apps. Starting from the head, we have that nice mask. It's painted on the eyeballs and on the face part. Moving down, we have the chest plate. It's got some nice paint apps on the front, the back, and of course, the actual chest with that blue and the silver Cobra logo. Arms are pretty bare, except for the right arm here has this cool little Nintendo 
controller looking thing. He's got some details on his gloves. He's got a belt. Moving down, he has a holster that loves to flop around. And then we have these sexy, sexy thigh high boots. But it's not just the actual figure. He comes with stuff. Of course, he comes with guns. He's got to. He's a Cobra guy. He comes with this nice little sidearm that fits nicely in the holster. It has no paint on it, but it does have some molded details. It's just a basic little gun. It fits in like so. And honestly, I'm probably never going to pull it out of that holster again. The next weapon he comes with is this gun. I'm not a weapon guy. I don't know what this is, but I can tell you one thing. I don't like it. It's just a weird shape. It's too big for him to look cool holding it in one hand, but it's too small to hold in two hands. Like, where do you put his second hand? This isn't a place you can put it. This is like a cyber bayonet looking knife thing. I mean, it definitely looks like something you don't want to hold. There's a little spot here, which is kind of where I try, but I feel like that's, that's just a weird spot because it's so close to where the actual pistol grip is. So I don't know. You can have him hold it however you want, but my guy's gonna be driving a tank anyway, so it doesn't really matter. This also comes out, the little magazine. You can attempt to get him in some cool poses, but again, his best pose is right on his butt, driving that his tank. But if it breaks down, he's got one other pair of accessories that I absolutely love. And the first thing we need to do is lose the hand. And while you technically don't need to, I find it easier to also lose this thing. And here what we have instead are these awesome alternate hands that aren't just fists, but they're like weighted boxing gloves. They are a lot thicker than the normal hand he comes with. And they are specifically for beating people up, you know, physically, throwing hands, if you will. Honestly, it's one of my favorite accessories that's ever come with a G.I. Joe figure in general. I just, I love these so much. They just look so good. But obviously that wasn't the only thing to come with it. Like I said, this was a wildly successful HasLab campaign. This is the Cobra His Tactician. This was the early bird figure. We got this for having the project fund within the first week of it going live. It actually funded within like the first day and a half. A lot of people credit this for why the campaign was as successful as it was. I don't think that's true, although it did help kind of get that excitement going. But an early bird figure can be as harmful as it is helpful. Isn't that right, Engine of Destruction, Hell Charger, Ghost Rider thing? It's basically the same box same figure, but different artwork. And then this is Ron Rudat's signature. Now I'm not sure if this is actually Ron Rudat's signature. It definitely looks like it's a real signature, not printed on the box. It looks like it was actually signed, but, but I might be wrong. I'm not a signature expert by any means, but there were over 20,000 of these. And I just can't imagine that that guy signed like 20,000 boxes. But you know, if you, if you want to pretend that it is, then, more power to you. This is figure number 100 in the entire line. So you might be thinking, Mike, what's up with the Ron Rudat thing? Well, he was a popular G.I. Joe toy designer person. I'm going to be honest here. I don't, I don't really know. I didn't follow any of this stuff when I cared about G.I. Joe as a small kid. And I never really got into the behind the scenes stuff outside of, you know, Larry Hama. I never heard his name until his campaign, to be honest with you. So hearing them drop that didn't spike any endorphins inside of my brain. I did not care other than, oh cool, a different figure. The colors are different and outside of those colors, it is the exact same figure, exact same molding, exact same articulation, exact same accessories. There's literally nothing different other than this one's kind of gray with black and red, whereas this one's red with like black and kind of blue, I guess, blue and silver. And the reason this is colored like this is Hasbro gave us these to vote on. Anyone that backed the project got these options to vote for it. And this one is the one that won. This is not the one that I voted for. I voted for this one. I like that coloring a lot better. I know it doesn't really match the rest of it. And I think this one won because a lot of people were hoping that it would match the his tank better and I I guess it does to me it it doesn't honestly I'm I'm not a huge fan of this coloring I'm not mad about it I'm just not 
the biggest fan of it. So the His Tank came with a repaint, but like I said, he came with the exact same things that the His Tank driver came with, starting off with this gun. This is his pistol. Unlike the driver, the tactician's is painted. It has this nice red stripe on the top. That's how you can tell it apart from the drivers. And it, of course, fits nicely into his holster. And again, probably never going to take it out. Same thing with the other gun. The He comes with the exact same weapon, the exact same removable cartridge, except for it also has the red painting on there. Mine will probably not be in his hands. He's just, he's just riding shotgun. He's sitting in his best friend's ride, you know, trying to holler at me. And of course, not to be undone, he too comes with hands that he can throw. The exact same gauntlets that the driver comes with, except for his are red, whereas the drivers are black. And that's how you can tell. And I like the red on here rather than the black, because I think it matches the helmet better, but he comes with them. So hooray. But we also started pounding into those unlocks starting with the first unlock, which got a couple people upset. What they are, are these little missile pods here. Each one is just a little missile. It goes on. It's got a, the little kind of dumbbell connection. I don't love kind of how insecure they are because they tend to want to pop off if you don't, you know, mess with them at the front. They'll, just like a normal old school G.I. Joe, they, they tend to not be super, super well in there but uh, they're fine. They don't fall out, you know, on their own. Like I can shake them around, they're fine. There were people who weren't thrilled by this. They didn't think it was good enough to be a tier on its own. Me personally, I don't care. The way I see it is I was paying money to fund the tank and the driver for the tank. And, and for me, that was enough. That's what sold me. The fact that we also got the tactician, was, you know, extra, just, it was just gold, it was money. I didn't really care. Tier one could have been, you know, a cardboard backdrop, for instance, for all I care. And what, what happens here is there's little parts right here, little ports, they open up. They look like little kind of just canisters when they're closed, which is nice, and they just flip right open, and then they, they slide in. So of course, there's one for each side, and I honestly, I like it. I think it kind of ties the room together, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, but they do move out. There we go. So those are the first tier, those little missile pod. We got little Cobra logos on there. Got a little red tip painted on. There's a big old hole at the end. Now the second tier is, another, it was honestly, this one was a big miss for me, but I think, I feel like it should have been a bigger win for some people. Uh, and that is an alternate canopy for the people that just want a more traditional looking his tank. So if you want that, it doesn't look bad. It's more like what the toy came with. You can have a more traditional canopy if you want to. I just think the gull wing, it adds so much more detail and I really like, I, I think it looks cool. Uh, the other thing that it comes with are these alternate tank tread covers. So if you want to, you can have it looking more like the original toy with the, the second tier. With the first tier just being missile pods and the second tier just being like an alternate canopy and side tracks, which in my opinion is closer to what tiers should be. They should just be add-ons to what you're getting to kind of give alternate looks. Maybe it gives someone a reason to buy two because they want one with both looks. And if you're not satisfied with that, I don't think tiers should be what swing you over. Tiers should just be like cherries on top. But some people back four tiers which is weird, but you know what? It's your money. You do you, you buy what you want. You don't buy what you don't want. And that's it. That's fine. I don't care. I don't care how you spend your money. That's just kind of how I view it. But ultimately, like, I'm not going to fight you over it. I'm not, I'm not going to say you're not collecting properly. If you, if you do it differently than I do it on to tier three. Now here, here's where we get into kind of my conspiracy theory. Tier three was a lot. We got, a bunch of things. First, we got this little chin gun. Now this chin gun is really nice. We got a lot of little paint details on it. It just kind of goes all the way around. And where it goes is, like I said, on the chin. So it goes right underneath here. So there's, there's a little hole right here, but it pushes in. This goes right up in there. 
kind of turns, goes up and down. It's just a fun little extra turret. Like why wouldn't you want more guns on your Hiss? Speaking of, it also comes with these little guns right here. These go right in here, just, just like that. And they swivel around, they go up and down like so. This little magazine comes off. And honestly, for a tier, I mean, extra guns for your Hiss, we're looking at three tiers and it's looking pretty beefy right now with all the missile pods and the guns, but, and this is just me conspiracy theorying here. I think Hasbro moved tier four up and bundled it with tier three. Up until now, each tier has just been an add-on for the Hiss tank itself, covers, canopies, missile pods, guns. But now tier three suddenly comes with this, the Hiss Gunner. Just like the previous two figures that came with the Hiss tank so far, that we've taken a look at, we got this nice, very sleek packaging, plastic free packaging. This is number 101. We, I didn't show the backs on the others, but you just get a little kind of wireframe layout and then the same kind of thing there. Also, not sealed. And of course, you get the female team member, the Hiss Tank Gunner. Deco-wise, she's the exact same as the Hiss Tank Driver. She's mostly red with some black and then also the blue and silver Cobra logo on her chest. And there's one point of articulation that I did neglect to mention earlier. Everything that we've seen on these figures has been very standard articulation for G.I. Joe, with the exception of this. And this is a, a new ankle swivel. We have the normal hinge and rocker, but now there's also a swivel. I think because there's usually some kind of thigh cut on figures, but since they have these very tall boots that go all the way up to those thighs. They don't have a spot for it, so they put it right at the ankle, and I guess that works. There's something to be said for Cobra. They're very accepting and progressive. On this team, they don't care if you're a guy or a girl. They don't even care what color your uniform is. The only thing they care about is you putting on those thigh-high boots. That's what's important to staying on this team. So what does the Hiss Tank Gunner come with? A lot, actually. And remember, this is still part of Tier 3. First, like always, we have the pistol. This is the sidearm. It's the exact same one that comes with the driver. No paint on it. It slides right into the holster where it will stay forever. She also comes with the exact same rifle that the Hiss Tank Driver comes with. Nothing's different, everything still pulls out, still got the bayonet, still looks weird. Probably my least favorite part of this whole experience. She also comes with this gun. I think this is one that's come with a figure before, but I can't for the life of me remember who. Maybe Big Ben? It's a machine gun. It has a magazine that is removable. It looks great in both hands. And, you know, being the gunner, this is the gun that my Hiss Tank gunner is going to use when I don't have her on the gunner position of the Hiss Tank. But let's be honest, she's pretty much always going to be in the gunner position on the Hiss Tank. She also comes with two, I don't know, melee weapons or tools? It's kind of the same thing, because any tool can be a melee weapon. Just ask a ninja. But uh, the first one is this really cool kind of hammer spike axe thing. It's very solid. It does have a little bit of a bend to it, but uh, it fits well in the hand. You can get some really cool poses out of it. I wish there had been some paint on it, like where the, the spikes are, but it's not that big of a deal. It looks fine. She can hold it. She can swing it. She can have a good time. And the other melee weapon is this shovel. You know, it's a shovel, it's a tool, but it's like, you can also use it as a melee weapon. It's got a bunch of really nice designs on here. This one is a little more bendy than I would like. It's much more bendy than the hammer, in my opinion. Uh, when I have any figures holding it, it does tend to warp in the hands, and it's really hard to get them looking like they're shoveling. You can, but because of the give in the actual plastic it's 
it's hard. And then lastly, she also does come with fists, same as the others. I feel like they're not as beefy as the boys version. Uh, I mean, obviously her hands are smaller because she has a smaller frame, but I feel like the gloves themselves could be a little beefier. And, and on this one, it just kind of looks more like it's in line with her arm rather than kind of sticking out like the bigger version does. Like that's a huge difference. Look at that, that's crazy. But the point still comes across and I love these hands. So now you might be thinking, okay, Mike, but what's your evidence? Where do you come off with this conspiracy theory? Well, every time they've shown us a figure so far, whether it was the his tank driver or the tactician or this figure, they were these renders. They were just like this, you could see it. And then for the fourth tier, they gave us this. This is a drawing, it's not a render. This is the fourth tier Cobra Commander, but a retro version. To kind of go with that, it took them a couple days, like a, a whole weekend plus some days after unlocking tier four. We knew we'd hit the tier four numbers, but they wouldn't show us what tier four was for a, what felt like an eternity. I mean. It, in the end, it wasn't a long time because we're talking about a couple days, but when we've already passed a goal and we'd seen everything else come so fast, this felt like an eternity and we got a drawing, not a render. So to me, that said that the His Tank Gunner here was originally tier four. Tier three was originally just the chin gun and the mounted guns on the turret. And because of the feedback, that people had given about the tiers so far, they bundled this with that third tier instead and gave us a completely new tier four. And honestly, something similar to that also happened with the dragonfly. I guess it's kind of cool if this is true. And again, this is just my personal theory. Uh, it's cool that Hasbro would listen to the fans and just on the fly, but hey, we got a Cobra Commander. Let's take a look at tier four. This is the only figure to come on a retro card. Everything else was boxed. And as you can see, I've opened up everything else before now, but I have a hard time opening this up. And I don't know why. I assume at some point we'll see a non his tank version of this. Obviously it won't come on the same looking card. I'll come on something more traditional that we see with the other retro cards. So I'm assuming like if I kept this on card, put it on my wall as a decoration. Eventually I can, I can get a Cobra Commander for you know my shelf that doesn't have that. But you know what? I'm an opener, I don't care. First, first let's do this. Punching that, always satisfying. This is Cobra Commander as he comes out of the package. And yes, I opened it up because yes, I play with my toys. And yes, there probably will be a version of this to come out in regular pack, well not regular packaging, it'll probably be in the retro packaging. The big difference is I'm guessing, were this to come out, I'm guessing physically it'll be the same figure. This is what's gonna be different. This is the version that came with this His Tank. It is the quote unquote Mickey Mouse version. They call it that because, well, if you look at the Cobra logo, it looks like a Mickey Mouse head. It's like a hidden Mickey but like, e well, more different evil than Disney's evil? I don't know. I'm not saying Disney isn't evil. I wonder what Disney's his tanks look like. This is the Cobra Commander that I've wanted from the line since it started. The other Cobra Commanders aren't bad. It was back when Hasbro was trying to do like modern reinterpretations of classic characters and Cobra Commander was always Cobra Commander-esque, but he, he was just missing that Cobra Commander flair. And, and this, I genuinely think, absolutely nails it. We've got that head. This is my favorite head. I know a lot of people like the hooded head, and honestly, we're probably never gonna get the hooded head. Something about how Hasbro doesn't want their figures resembling maybe real life hooded bad guys. This is my favorite looking Cobra Commander. I always thought the cloth hood was kind of dumb. He looked like a Pac-Man ghost. Whereas this looks like a scary, formidable military leader. We have, again, kind of standard articulation. He's got head, he's got arm, he's got butterfly joints. You know, you're, we're not really getting into new territory. I haven't really done articulation for the whole thing, but I do want to say 
he's got some pretty good ab crunch and you can actually get him into some pretty cool poses then i'll show some show some pictures of wow the only thing i don't love about this uh, i mean i love it don't get me wrong this right here this comes down very easily it does not go up his thighs are too thick and they don't go up very far past his knee and it just tends to want to fall down all the time I don't, I don't love that but i do love that he has a little knife sheath knife sheath knife sheath knife sheath knife sheath yeah that's it also he too has these lower ankle swivels like the hiss drivers do so this just might be a new thing for the line now i've been seeing people say he doesn't have an ankle rocker well this is him with his legs as far apart with both his feet flat on the ground he does he is just very blue he is i feel like a darker shade blue than the regal version a lighter shade blue than the original version and he's not black like the supreme version so i, I think this is the correct look for cobra commander and we've got painted straps we've got two belts we got a belt buckle all the stuff's painted we have this nice red stripe down the pants han solo style you know the the pants go down over the boots like they're stretch tights and they are look at those those are stretchy tights the cobra logo perfect these little dots and buttons Perfect. Stripes. Perfect. Everything's perfect. So let's talk about accessories, starting off with his cool little knife. Now, what I love about these things like this, like the little sidearms the other characters came with, or his knife, like the original version of the toy would have a knife here on the side, but it would be molded on. A lot of the Joes had things like guns and, and grenades and knives and stuff that were molded on. You could pretend they were using it, but they weren't, you couldn't use it. Like you couldn't pull it out. And, and stab someone with it because it was molded on. It wasn't a separate piece. And now it is because it's a six inch figure. And I like that. The knife itself is, you know, we got black handle, little kind of, what is that? Kind of a bronzish, I'm, I'm colored by it. I don't think it's silver, but it's definitely something of like color. Uh, there's paint at the end and then the knife is also painted. The blade is painted, I mean. And that just sits snugly right there and we just put it on, I forget it exists and he can use it if he ever wants to. The next piece I'm gonna show off is his backpack. Now, I usually don't do backpacks with my Joes. I just feel like they take up shelf space that I just don't need. This right here is a classic piece of Cobra Commander uh, accoutrement. Like, the original figures, at least the one I had, had a little spot on the back for his gun, which he comes with. Now, there's no paint on this. It's just a black molded gun. It's a pistol, fits in his hand. But Cobra Commander doesn't, you know, like he doesn't need to shoot people. He can shoot people, but he doesn't need to. He's got people for that. Okay, I don't know who needs to hear this, but this gun looks stupid. It looks like a hairdryer. I can't not see a hairdryer. He does come with a gun and the original one could put the gun on the back. There's a little molded spot for it. So with this, they have given us a backpack. It looks like it's part of his back, which I like. And the gun just kind of sits into that little spot right there. And, and this whole thing, great. Will I probably display it this way? No, I don't think I will, honestly. He's got alternate hands. He does have these two hands, which are C-grip hands or cuppy hands, I like to call them. They have two molded triggers on each one. But if you want to change that out, he too has fisty hands, just like the other people that come with the his tank. Now, I'm gonna be honest, he's probably not throwing any hands. He's probably just shaking his fists in the air in anger or in excitement. I don't think he would ever actually punch someone. I don't think he ever actually could punch someone. That's just not what Cobra Commander does. But he does have fists, which I appreciate. And his final two hands are a pointy hand and then like an open, graspy hand but the open hand a lot of fun stuff you can do with the open hand but what it's meant for is his final accessory and that is this globe with a snake now i don't know if this is supposed to be like a statue that he's holding or if he actually has a gold snake that he just has trained to circle a, a little fake globe for him honestly i also don't care but it's a cool little accessory. It's one of those accessories where it's really cool that he comes with it, but I will literally never display him 
holding it. Now I say that fully having the Supreme version displayed on my shelf holding that one. I feel like that one deserves a globe. This one does not deserve a globe. This is the bumbling Cobra Commander that I wanted. This is the bumbling Cobra Commander that I love. Those are all of the figures that come with the His Tank. Those are all of the tiers. Let's go back and put this together. So that's mostly it for what comes with the His Tank. There are a couple things that I haven't talked about yet. The first is this little piece. Now, this was a surprise coming out of the box because it wasn't in any of the pictures. It wasn't in any of the tiers. I have no idea when they added this on or even what it was. So you don't have to put it on. Like it's, it's fine how it is. This is how they sold it. This was in every picture they showed of it. But if you want to, you can put this on. It just snaps right in, it stays in, it locks in, but it's easy to take off too. Uh, and while it doesn't have the red Cobra logo on it, it does have this embossed logo. So it's just like a little bit more armored, I guess, is what they're going for there. I like it. I think it looks good. It gives it a little bit more, I don't know, beefiness to the turret. And then the last thing to really talk about here is this sticker sheet. Now this is neat. There's a lot of great stickers on here. The 788s, there's virtually any number you want to put on here. The cool Cobra Hiss thing, couple of Cobra logos, some Mickey Mouse Cobra logos, the Simper, you know, Serpent, whatever. However you want to put them on, it's up to you. There are literally no instructions on how to put them on or where to put them on, which I don't like. It's got Cobra logos on it, so it's not like there's no logos or there's no 788 if I don't you know, put them on there. So it's kind of a, it's weird. Um, maybe if Toy Hacks comes out with a sticker set for it, I might, I might get one, but I just, I don't think it's super necessary. So the next thing to talk about here are the lights. Before we get into the lights, this is where they go in. You need a little screwdriver to open up. There's three AA batteries that go in there. The next thing is the button. This is the button right here that activates the lights. So let's uh, let's push the button. I think it does like seven different things here. So pressing it once turns on these front red grills, kind of like Knight Rider a little bit. It also turns on the LEDs inside. And honestly, they look gorgeous. That's this side of the cockpit. I like that the little heads up kind of targeting things lit up. I love all the little lights over here. This is probably one of my favorite things about this entire set. And just a quick glance at the other side, you can see the little control panels here. Everything looks great. I love the little joysticks and buttons. I, I, this whole thing is, it just looks so good. But that's not all. Another button press turns on this Cobra logo. That's more or less what it looks like on my desk here. Now it's not the darkest place. Obviously I have lights on the room so we can see things. Uh, it shows up pretty well uh, for what it is. It's fine. It's, it's, it's a cool idea at the very least. Next is headlights and look at those headlights. Good Lord. <laughs> and it's not just the headlights, it's also the tail lights, it's got tail lights. Like that's awesome. And their little Cobra logos, it's, it's cool. It's cool that it's got that. If that wasn't enough for you, we have even more lights. We got those floodlights going on down there. So I think that's the full illumination here uh, where we have the front, the back, and then both sets of headlights up at the front. Uh, after that, we kind of push it again. That turns off the red Cobra logo here. So if you don't want that, you don't have to have it on. And then we can just turn off these lights if you want to with another press. Another one just leaves these cool red running lights on. It even turns off the cockpit ones. Again, this is a lot for photography. Like if you want to get a little kind of creative with it, with your, with your photos. And then one more just turns this one back on with the red. Again, just kind of cool uh, photography options. And then next is off. And if you're curious, after 10 minutes, these lights will turn off all on their own. And then if you press the button again, it turns on exactly how you left them. So you don't have to go through the whole process all over again. That's not the only thing that has lights. I didn't actually talk about the back here. The back has a lot of cool stuff. First, we have this little grate for figures to stand on. 
Uh, that does fold up. And then I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but we have the, the trailer hitch down here, which is pretty cool. But the real thing here is the inside of the back. So the inside of the back, we can see the bottom of the turret. Now the turret can just pop right up and out if you want to have more space inside. The problem is there's no cover on the top. So if you don't have this in, that's it. <laughs> there's just a big hole in the top. So uh, not very secure, but it is an option. Uh, there is a little seat right here and that seat does go up and down like so. It's a little Cobra logo, which is pretty cool. It's just one big Cobra logo. Now there's other spots here and I don't know what you could do. I don't know if you could take this out and move it over one. There, again, there's no instructions on, on if you wanna do that and I don't want to break this. So like, I don't want to experiment with it, but I don't know what else this would be for, this little track right here, but it seems like you should be able to put this chair here if you wanna push it out one more. Uh, but you might not wanna do that because on the other side, we have this little kind of weapons rack. The weapons rack is a neat idea. The problem is, it's just, it's weirdly spaced. So like if you wanna try to get one of these guns in here, you can, and they fit okay. Um, but when you when you get a couple in here, they, they tend to kind of knock into each other and fall out and it gets kind of cramped and hard to do. But it is cool that you can put the weapons in the weapons rack here. You can even put like the hammer in this little slot. Now, I guess you could put the shovel in there too. The, the problem is that the shovel's just really tall. So it just kind of sticks out like that. Like I wish that you could have put the shovel in like this, like shovel side down so it's sticking up. I mean, if you want to bend this, you probably can, but I don't want to do that. There's another one on the back, back there. So you can, you can put both there, but uh, you can also, I guess, just put the shovel kind of, oops, <laughs> kind of hanging out uh, on the, the rack right here. There's a, there's one, two, three, four, five, five racks. So you can put five weapons on there and then two little things in the little shovels, you know, the little, the holes here. So it's cool. It's a cool idea. Again, I like this. The other part uh, is it's a little cramped back there. It's a little cramped to get a figure in here, especially something like the his tactician, which, you know, if you, I guess you could put the, the gunner back there, the driver drives, so he's in the cockpit. So someone's got to sit back here and there's also no seat belt. So uh, when you get him in there, as soon as you move it, he just falls out of his seat. Little nitpicks, but it's a cool idea. It's cool that there's a little space to take a, a picture in or just kind of, you know, store stuff in. And it's cool that it's lit and the light turns on automatically as soon as you open that door and that's cool. And then down here we do have you know, some molding, just detailing on the grate here, which it, it looks really nice. I, I really like this. I guess what I want to do now is just put the figure in the cockpit, right? The driver. Uh, now, again, I'm just going to open the whole thing. You can just open the gold wing door if you want to, but that just seems a little, a little silly. So we have the driver here and the way this works is in the middle here is the latch. The, the whole thing comes together right in the middle. So it just kind of pulls apart the top from the bottom, like so. Uh, there is some give on the side. There's little kind of ends to try to keep the strap from coming all the way out from behind the seat. <laughs> I just love his arms in the air like that. Like he's about to go on a ride and he's really excited about it. The top and bottom peg back in and, and, and they actually peg back in pretty well. Like it's, it's not really hard to get them back in. That's it. The his tank driver in, he's all buckled in. Cobra is all about safety. The hardest part, believe it or not, of all this is actually trying to get his hands on these little pieces inside. There is a joystick here. There is a throttle here. So that's the best I can do with getting his hands on the little controls. Once the cockpit's closed, it's hard to see anyway, but I know it's there and now you know it's there and uh, we can just pretend that it's always like that even if he accidentally stops holding on to it for whatever reason. This is what it looks like on this side. Oh, I, I honestly, with the control panels lit up, oh, I just love it so much. It's hard not to love this. So with that, we close up the gull wings. One thing I have noticed, uh, this side right here does like to not stay flush a lot. Now I can get it if I play around with it, I can get it to stay down, but there are times 
where I'll just notice that it's, it's popped up just a little bit. This one doesn't have that problem, but this one right here tends to just kind of pop up and I can get it sometimes to stay and it's not a big deal, but some other times it just, it wants to pop up just a little bit. And that's something that might bug you if you know, you're, I don't know, susceptible to little things like that. Um, but also I guess keep in mind that there are two different cockpits and the other one doesn't have the gullwing door. So if you don't like all the details and designs and rivets and little extra windows and stuff, then by all means, you just use the other one. It's not a big deal. The gullwing doors pop right open. Oh man, it just, it's just so cool. I just, I love that so much. It's, a, it's such a small thing. So next we have the gunner here and she can just stand right in there. Now this is a, a similar situation. Like I said earlier, there are handles right here that she can grab onto, but man, it is really hard to get her to hold on to them because of the, you know, they move, everything's so small and cramped in there. It's not impossible, but it is really frustrating to do and have her stay there. Next, we have the tactician and again, we could try to get him in here. It's gonna be pretty tough, but in theory, all he has to do is sit. So like I said, it's a little cramped in there. I find it easier if we kind of raise the seat up a little bit, but he does kind of bump into the turret back there, but it doesn't look awful. Like he's fine. It just, he's not secure. <laughs> he's not secure even a little bit. Where can we put him on here? Here is the other problem with this set. Uh, there are no foot pegs anywhere. There's this nice decking right here that folds up for the door so you can open it up, but there are no footholds anywhere and there really should have been. So he can hold on to the bar back here and he stays pretty well. I just wish there had been some kind of pegs down here to just to make it more secure, especially with the gunner up here. Like it would have been great if there were pegs for her to stand on. This isn't a major issue, but you know, for the money you're spending, it, it just, there's little things like that where it would have been nice if we'd had some kind of peg system for them to stand on. But that being said, let me get my full thoughts out on this. This is the fifth HasLab that I have backed. It's the fourth one that funded RIP Rancor. Of the four that I've gotten now, this is the first one where I just really felt like I got my money's worth out of it. For $300, this is four figures, a giant tank, a bunch of accessories and lights. And honestly, I know this sounds silly, but the lights really, really make it for me. If Hasbro ever did another crack at a black series vehicle, like has that ATST, an A wing, anything like that, it has to have lights. That's to me what really sells it as premium. And this feels premium. Nothing about this feels light. Nothing about this feels hollow. Even the other GI Joe vehicles, like the Ram and the Trouble Bubble, they, they don't feel great, but they were also, you know, pretty inexpensive. The Trouble Bubble was like, what, 50 bucks? I think the Ram was about 40 or $50. They feel like what they cost. The His Tank, it almost feels like a completely different line. So that's, that's the big thing. I just really wanted to say that I'm so happy with this. And I really, really hope that the Dragonfly gives me the same amount of joy because I also back that. And of course, I have the fire team to go along with this. That's a three pack with a range viper and I think a Cobra officer. They're all themed to look like they go with this tank. So there are extra troops for it. And then also there is the SMS coming out that hooks onto that tow hitch that comes with a techno viper. This is gonna look so cool on the shelf, but that's not to say that it's perfect. Let's be honest. I mean, it's Hasbro, so they're still gonna have some issues. I love the light effects. That's easily hands down my favorite part of this. The next is a little, a little thing on the bottom that I actually didn't show that. Here's a picture of it. 
This is a real warning on the bottom of the Hiss tank that I thought originally was just an actual warning, like electronics warning or a cleaning warning, something. But no, it's like an OSHA warning, like a like a Cobra OSHA warning for you know work safety, and that cracks me up. I I love little touches like that. Some things I don't like. Let's just get this out of the way. The guns for the figures, they're not great. They're my, probably my least favorite guns that come with any figure. I just don't think they fit in the hands well. Don't think they pose well. I don't like them. Um, the canopy issue I talked about a little bit where it kind of pops up, it doesn't sit flush. There's also an issue on the left turret of mine where it doesn't want to snap in. The one on the right side snaps in fine. The left side doesn't want to snap in securely. It doesn't fall out or anything, but it moves a little bit more freely than I would like. Also, the clear plastic is just scary. Like that's just a scary thing. You don't know if or when that's gonna break because clear plastic is notoriously brittle. But some things I would have liked, these are things that, you know, they're not bad. They're, they're, they're just things that it could have come with that I would like to see in the future maybe somehow. So if I could just have one thing added, it would be sounds. And I, I know it sounds silly, like I don't need pew pew sounds, but something as basic as like an engine idling, uh, just something guttural, you know, this looks cool, but could you imagine if it also sounded like this? Blast effects. The blast effects are noticeably missing. There's ports for them everywhere. On the front of the turrets, on the back of the missiles, there's places for blast effects. I'm sure that some of the blast effects we have might be compatible, but what I want is maybe kind of like what they're doing with the dragonfly, where the blast effect has a peg hole on it so that you can kind of attach it to make it look like it's actively firing a missile. That would be cool. Um, the, the blast effects I have don't really fit the big turrets on top, but other than that, I am so happy with this. This is cool. Let me know down in the downstairs area. Did you get this? Did I change your mind? Were you a no from the beginning and, and decide, you know what, maybe I do? Were you a yes and then decided you didn't want it? I would love to read and respond to comments when I can. I also want to thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon. Every name on this list is near and dear to my heart, and these people support me monetarily, and I can't thank you enough. So let me know what you think. I love it. I really do. Very, and I'm not just saying that, trying to convince myself that, oh yeah, I love it, you know, because I dropped, well, I dropped the money a year and a half ago, so it's like, it's like I didn't even spend it. I don't miss money from a year and a half ago. Now I've got this toy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting this far. Like, share, subscribe. Yo, Joe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.